Guerrero. Guerrero is the Spanish word for warrior. It also happens to be the name of one of Mexico's 32 states. Funny enough, this state is actually named after a warrior of the Mexican War for Independence from Spain. This person also happens to be the second president of Mexico. Today, we're going to be talking about Vicente Guerrero. Vicente Guerrero was born on August 10, 1782 in Tixla, located in modern-day Guerrero, Mexico. He was a mixed race, born to a native mother and a father of African ancestry. He is described as being tall and robust and of dark complexion. Now, Due to his dark complexion, he would often be referred to as El Negro, as usually goes with Mexican nicknames. We're not very creative with them. Now, Vicente grew up in an area predominantly populated by people of native ancestry and actually often found himself more comfortable conversing in the local native language than in Spanish. It is perhaps through his experience growing up in this community among humble peasants that Vicente would develop his harsh opposition to the social and economic inequalities present in Mexico during his time, such as the racist caste system enforced by the local government under Spanish rule. In his youth, Vicente was a muleteer, driving mules across Mexico to deliver freight. It is during these travels across the nation that he would hear the idea of Mexican independence from Spain. And in December of 1810, Vicente would go on to join the rebel army of Jose Maria Morelos, a Roman Catholic priest turned revolutionary would take charge of the Mexican fight for independence after the execution of Miguel Hidalgo. Now, Vicente would fight in southern Mexico and would go on to distinguish himself in the Battle of Izucar in February of 1812. Later in 1812, Vicente would go on to fight in the Siege of Huajuapan de Leon, which resulted in a rebel victory, and the Battle of Citlala, which also resulted in a rebel victory. And by November of 1812, after the capture of Oaxaca by rebel forces, Vicente Guerrero would go on to be promoted to the rank of lieutenant colonel. So after the rebels captured Acapulco in April of 1813, their campaign would begin to experience several unfortunate failures, leading to the eventual capture of Morelos by royalist forces in 1815. This would lead to the eventual execution of Morelos. However, the fires of revolution didn't die with the priest. After the execution of Morelos, Vicente Guerrero would go on to join forces with Guadalupe Victoria and Isidoro Montes de Oca, taking the position of commander-in-chief of the rebel forces. And for several years after taking command of the rebel army, Vicente would lead a campaign of guerrilla warfare against the Spanish. However, in 1818, the Viceroy of New Spain would seek to end Vicente's insurgency through Vicente's father. Vicente's father was sent to deliver a message to his son, granting him and his forces amnesty should they surrender. In exchange for putting down his rebellion, Vicente was offered positions in government as well as other compensation, but Vicente refused. Vicente is often stated as having said, La patria es primero, the fatherland comes first. After rejecting amnesty, Vicente Guerrero would go on to remain one of the most active and prominent rebel leaders at large, running a campaign of guerrilla warfare and rebellion. At this point, however, they had sort of run into a stalemate. And thus, in another attempt to stamp out rebellion in Mexico, the Spanish government would send Agustin de Iturbide against Guerrero. This backfired against the Spanish as not only was Guerrero able to hold back Iturbide's forces, but soon Iturbide and Guerrero would find themselves as allies in rebellion against the Spanish government. And they would come together under what was known as the Plan of Iguala. This would join their forces into what was then known as the Army of the Three Guarantees. The plan not only proclaimed Mexico's independence, it also abolished the caste system which separated Mexicans across racial lines and it also established a constitutional monarchy in Mexico under the first Mexican empire. This plan also recognized the Catholic Church as Mexico's official state church. And the army of the three guarantees would march victoriously into Mexico City on September 27, 1821. In the same year, the Treaty of Cordoba would be signed, effectively beginning Mexico's independence. In December 1822, only about a year after its formation, the Mexican Empire found itself in a civil war. This conflict was started by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana in favor of creating a republican form of government. 
Vicente Guerrero, along with other former revolutionaries, would find themselves once again taking up arms against the government, turning on Iturbide's government. Now, despite Guerrero's previous success during the War of Independence against Iturbide's forces, Guerrero would unfortunately face disastrous defeat. However, eventually the imperial government would collapse, and Mexico would go on to be governed by the provisional Mexican government until October 10th of 1824, when the first Mexican Republic would be established. Now, sometime after that, Vicente Guerrero would go on to become the second president of Mexico under the first federal republic, with his presidency starting April 1st, 1829, after being appointed to the position by Congress, which is a problem. Now, despite having run for election to the presidency, Guerrero had actually lost the election to former royalist officer General Manuel Gomez Pedraza. Soon after, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana would raise arms against the government again, this time in support of a Guerrero presidency. And thus, under the threat of violence, Pedraza was forced to resign his presidency. And after Pedraza's resignation, Guerrero would be appointed to the second president of the republic, although his administration would never truly have the full support of the Mexican establishment, as his administration was seen as being illegitimate as having come into power through a coup. And as a result of this sentiment, Vicente's time as president would come to an end on December 17th, 1829 after his vice president, Anastasio Bustamante, would stage a revolution against Guerrero's administration. And after his capture in 1831, despite the protests of the state legislatures of Jalisco and Zacatecas, Vicente Guerrero would be executed. Historian Jan Bazant speculates that the reason to why Guerrero was executed, as opposed to exiled like other deposed Mexican leaders, is as follows. Guerrero was of mixed blood and the opposition to his presidency came from the great landowners, generals, clerics, and Spaniards resident in Mexico. Guerrero's execution was perhaps a warning to men considered as socially and ethnically inferior not to dare to dream of becoming president. Now, as president, Guerrero abolished the practice of slavery in Mexico, although it should be noted that some Mexican states had already abolished slavery within their borders. Slavery had also already been banned by the Spanish government in 1824. Guerrero's ban on slavery, however, officially abolished slavery in the entire country. A move which, for the most part, only really affected Coahuila y Texas due to its population of immigrant slave owners from the United States. As president, Guerrero also called for the creation of public schools, for land title reforms, and the development of new industries in this young and barely starting nation. Guerrero also feverishly fought for the rights of racially oppressed minorities and the financially oppressed people of Mexico. Now, unfortunately, Vicente's story is not one that's often heard um, by Mexicans or Chicanos or Mexican Americans outside of Mexico. But it's also important to understand that oftentimes Guerrero's story was also whitewashed when it was told in Mexico with some depictions of him showing him a lot lighter skin than what he was, uh, depicting him as a mestizo as opposed to an Afro-Mexicano. And this is of no surprise, unfortunately, as Mexico has a past of actively downplaying the influence and contribution of Afro-Mexicans in Mexican history and culture. Anyway, guys, this has been Internet Mexican. That's just sort of a short history on Vicente Guerrero. It's important that we remember our history. And for those of us who didn't grow up in you know, our country of origin, it's important for us to go out and learn this on our own and to pass it on to the next generation. Teach your children where we come from. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. And um, I'll see you guys next time.